The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship. As we get a gather in God's house this morning to be fed with his word, assured of the forgiveness of sins God has given to us through his son Jesus, who died and rose again. It's in that joy and promise that we gather together as brothers and sisters in Christ and ask that God would bless us this morning as we gather in worship. Warm welcome to all who are in worship this morning. I invite you to sign the record of fellowship. It's the red booklet at the end of each pew. Please pass that to people sitting next to you that they may sign their attendance with us this morning as well. Today we get to celebrate LWML Sunday, Lutheran Women's Missionary League, as they do so many various things throughout the church, not just at Trinity, but around the nation, around the world in serving God's people, in proclaiming his word. And so we recognize them as servants of God and also consider how God has called us to serve. And so that'll be the focus of our worship this morning. As we have gathered as brothers and sisters in Christ, let us also stand and greet each other with the peace of Christ. This morning, we follow the order of service as printed in our worship folder. If you didn't happen to get a bulletin as you came in, please feel free to go to the back during the opening hymn. Our elders, ushers, be happy to get you connected with one. As we turn in our hymnal to our opening hymn, number 869, With the Lord Begin Your Task, we'll stand for the last stanza as we ask the Lord to bless us this morning in worship.
We turn to page one in our worship folder. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Take a moment of silence, reflection on God's word, and self-examination. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your salvation comes. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your salvation comes. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Our hymn of praise is hymn number 816.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you announce your will for us in mysterious and troubling ways. We pray that as Mary once heard and accepted the angel's message of your will, we too may hear your call and respond with full faith and willingness to serve. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our scripture readings. The Old Testament reading for LWML Sunday is recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. The young man Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the young man. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is recorded in the book of Philippians, chapter 2, beginning with verse 5. St. Paul writes, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Out of honor and respect for Jesus, please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel as we sing. Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. 
But she was greatly troubled at this saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. This time we invite the children to come forward for a children's message. Boys and girls, you can come and sit in front of the steps up here. Good morning, friends. So today on the bulletin cover, it says, ready to serve. Are you ready to serve? Not so sure. So let's practice on this. What we're going to do is we got to be ready whenever it is time. So when I tell you, you, what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that we're asleep. And when I say, wake up, you're going to wake up and say, ready to serve. Let's practice. Say, ready to serve. Ready to serve. So you're going to jump up and say that. Okay, so pretend you're asleep. Go ahead and fall asleep. Close your eyes and fall asleep. Yes, get very comfortable here. Pretend it's the middle of the night and you're asleep. Wake up. I didn't say wake up, go back to sleep. But remember, when I say those words, you're gonna jump up on your feet and shout, ready to serve. Are you gonna do that? Okay, okay. Wake up. I didn't say wake up. <laughs> Go back to sleep. We'll try this one more time. <laughs> wake up. <laughs> you guys aren't very good at this. Because am I saying wake up? Who is? Look in the back. It was Mr. Heiliger saying it in the back. <laughs> See, do our voices sound alike? Kind of? Okay, okay. That's actually probably very legitimate there. So it's like you just got our voices confused. See, God calls us to serve, but sometimes we have a little trouble hearing his voice. We actually heard about Samuel today who had that problem, didn't he? Samuel was a young boy, maybe not much older than you are, and he was asleep, and God was calling to him, but he thought it was another guy calling him, his boss. And so he ran over to his boss saying he was ready to serve, but his boss said, go back to sleep. And this happened three times till his boss, Eli, figured out, no, God was calling him. So Samuel then told God that he was ready to serve, because that is who we serve. We serve God. God asks us to show love to our neighbors and to love God, and in turn, God loves us. So it is a good thing to serve God, but whenever God calls us, make sure it's God who's calling us. Listen for his voice and be ready to serve. Okay, one more time. We're going to try this. There's going to be no tricks this time. Go ahead, fall asleep, and jump up and say, ready to serve when I say wake up. Wake up! 
Ready to serve. All right, that was great. Very surprising, wasn't it? All right, you can all head back to your seats, and then the congregation will join together singing the hymn of the day, Speak, O Lord, Your Servant Listens. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On beautiful fall days like this, like many of you, my thoughts turn to football. It's a good time to watch football. And one of the things that I was thinking about with football is if you know the name of only one player on a football team, who is it? The quarterback. Of course it's the quarterback. And if you don't know the name of the quarterback, Simply listen to the broadcast. The announcers are going to say the quarterback's name 150 times during the broadcast, and you will know it by the end of the game. But that being said, everyone knows who the quarterback is. They make a lot of money, and you know who they are. Question. Even on your favorite team, do you know the name of the five guys who stand in front of him and make up his offensive line? The ones who are blocking make sure he doesn't get tackled and are incredibly important for the team. Now, I'll mention, I like football. I don't know who those guys are most of the time. I'm like, ah, oh, it's the, 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 the big guy, you know? But obviously, they're very important to the team, and the team would fail miserably without them. And indeed, you could think of teams you've seen where they have a bad front line there, and they just get run over. But 
If you watch a broadcast, you see even people that I bet nobody, even the most die-hard fans, know who they are. And I'm talking about the sideline. You ever watch a broadcast and they all sudden pan over the camera to the sideline? And there's like a whole bunch of people there and you're like, what do they do? I wonder why they're standing there. And I'm sure they're important, otherwise they wouldn't be standing there, but I have no idea what their names are and what they do, but they are obviously important to the team for some reason. Not that I'll know what it is. But I bet I could find that one person who has taken the time to learn the name of every assistant coach and every person who's in the training and medical and health and security team and may know who they are. But I bet if I went all the way to an important person, I could find someone on the team that no one knows who they are, and that's the person who maintains the grass on the football field. No fan, I don't care who they are, is gonna know who that guy's name is, probably. <laughs> but if you think about it without the grass, there's no football game. Even if it's artificial turf, that thing needs to be maintained. Somebody needs to even do those jobs as well. They're all important, but they're not all glamorous. They don't all involve name recognition and advertisements and commercials where they get to be celebrity guests on things. Some people just simply have to work without recognition, even though their job is still very important. I think that's an apt idea for service because I think sometimes in the body of Christ where we are all called to serve, some of us don't think we're important because uh, our names aren't in big lights, that we aren't doing the glamorous jobs. Maybe we don't have the high-paying salaries for the work that we do, and we think that our work is somehow less important. That's not how service works. God calls each and every one of us to serve, and we should be ready to serve. And these readings for LWML Sunday, all three of them from the Old Testament, the Gospel, and the Epistle, all point to how we are to serve. Starting with Samuel, as I mentioned in the children's message, Samuel was a young man, maybe just even a kid there. What had happened is that his mother was barren and couldn't have any children. And she prayed to the Lord and said that if she had a son, she would dedicate her son to service in the tabernacle at the time. And so when he was born, he was dedicated in that way and served as kind of like a servant slash son to the high priest Eli. Now, Eli was the most important person in the entire country. Not that was he only the high priest at the tabernacle, but he was also the judge who was in charge of the land. This was before they had any kings. And so Eli, with this position of importance, did many good things, but he had a glaring weakness, and that was how he took care of his sons. See, his sons, who also served as priests in the tabernacle, were wicked. They stole from God in the offerings, and they had sexual relations with women who came to worship at the tabernacle. It was abhorrent what they were doing. So God warned Eli about this, and Eli didn't take the warning. And that brings us to today's reading, where God now is going to work through Samuel to get the point across. The high priest and judge wouldn't listen, but will the child listen? And indeed, the child does. I think that's something that we sometimes forget. We think that those who are high and mighty might be above the rules, I think each and every one of us probably have that little attitude sometimes where we think, well, the rule doesn't apply to me because of X, Y, Z. Or maybe we do the sin where we compare ourselves to other and be like, you know, at least I'm better than that other guy. Maybe Eli did that. Maybe Eli said, yeah, I'm a bad dad, but I'm not as bad as some dads, you know? I got some things going for me. Or he just was like, Lord, I'm just so busy doing your work. How can you expect me to take care of other things? There's a million excuses out there of self-righteousness, and they all stink. Instead, what Eli needed was correction. And so if you keep reading in 1 Samuel, Samuel does listen to Eli, and he does respond to God. And the next day, Samuel has to give Eli bad news, words of judgment from God, words of correction from God. And to Eli's credit, he accepts them. Eli understands that he too is a servant of God, 
and he needs those words of judgment. It's what he deserves for his sins and the sins of his family that he has done. I think there's a good thing that servants need to listen to God that we can get from 1 Samuel. Both Samuel needs to listen to God, but also Eli. No matter who we are, in what position we are, we put ourselves under God's word and listen to him. But God's word doesn't always bring bad news. I know it does with Samuel there. But Samuel also would be the prophet of God and the next judge of the land of Israel. And he would do many great things and bring deliverance to his people and have years and years of peace to come. But what if we don't understand what God really wants us to do? We're kind of perplexed or confused about kind of what God is having us do in our lives. Well, then maybe we can relate better with Mary in the gospel lesson today. I love just sort of the little details we have here that we have the angel Gabriel comes to her and greets her. You who are highly favored with the Lord is with you. And she was greatly troubled by that. Well, why is she troubled by that? She is troubled because why is an angel talking to her? She's not anyone important. But indeed, she would be based on what God had called her to do. But she seems to be, still be not so certain of how this is going to happen. She says she's going to have a baby. She's like, I'm a virgin. How is this to be? Again, questioning what's going on there. And maybe not understanding fully everything given to her, she still puts herself under God in his servant, saying, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And maybe we too are perplexed about what God has called us to do. Maybe we think about our own situation in life, and we think about, well, why has God put me in this neighborhood, or in this job, or this community? Why does God keep making me run into this person I don't seem to get along with very well? Why has God given me this illness? Why am I unemployed? Why is this happening to me, God? And in the midst of all those difficulties of wondering why God is to it, do we, like Mary, say, let it be to me according to your word and serve God wherever he wants us to serve? Or do we run from his service, seeking to do something else or do what we think is best? I think one of the things that sometimes confuses us is we don't see the whole picture of how God is working. God sometimes asks us to have serve in ways that we might think are small, you know, loving a neighbor, speaking kind words, being generous with what we have and what we are given, and we don't see the larger impact of how God is working in this world. I know as a child, one of the things that I thought was a little bit silly was mite boxes. Everyone knows what mite boxes are, right? It's thing where they gather up the coins and they put them in the little boxes there. And I kind of had the attitude as a kid, how does my loose change help anyone? Well, in case you don't know this, mite boxes are actually very powerful and effective in what they do. I uh, grabbed the Lutheran Women Quarterly in the back there. It has an update on the mite boxes. Um, they are supporting 31 different ministries that they list in this book here and have the goal, and I'm sure they're going to make it, of raising $2,350,000 through those mite boxes. The Lutheran Women's Missionary League, and yes, you got to talk about them on their Sunday, is a very, very effective organization, not only at serving at the local church, but be able to impact things nationally and globally with how they are generous and support other people. And I don't see how my little pennies can make that much of a difference, but they can united and given to God with the offerings brought by his other people. Of course, that's how it's work. So I may not understand what God has called me to at the moment, but may I serve him, trusting that God has the bigger things in mind with the small things I do in my own humble service. And that's the thing, is service sometimes is tough for us because it is humbling. It's putting our own selfish desires aside and putting someone else's needs ahead of us. And I think there's a lot of joy to be found in that. You know, serving God and serving others. 
You just simply need to do it to understand what that is. But this is something also that we need to have the attitude that we are not entitled to things, but rather in all things we work under God in his kingdom. This is actually something that I love in the Philippians reading here, where it talks about, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped and held on to. Think about it. Jesus Christ, God himself, infinite in power and majesty and glory, did not consider something to be grasped and held on to, but let it go and became nothing. That's hard for to imagine, because if I have something that's good and I like doing, I hold on to it. I let it keep trying to keep, stay there as long as I can. But letting go of that goodness in order to become nothing, infinite God being reduced to a single cell in the womb of Mary, that is what God does. And he grows as we all did, going through all the phases of life that we have. As it says in Hebrews, being tempted in every way that we have been tempted and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient. And when we think of the humility of Christ, we might think of him washing his disciples' feet, saying that no task was beneath him. Who are we to say there's a task beneath us? But it goes beyond that in the Philippians reading. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. He died for us and gave us his righteousness. That was the service, putting his own wants aside and putting our need before us. But it doesn't end there. Therefore God has highly exalted and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. See, that's the good news of the gospel, that he who humbles himself will be exalted, and many who are first shall be last, and many who are last shall be first, and that we have it all wrong, that the people who we think are important and powerful and enduring are often just flashes in the pad here on this world. And in the eternal scope of things and in the kingdom of God, <laughs> those who are often overlooked, those who serve in humble ways, those who are doing what God has asked them to do are indeed among the great. As Jesus says, the meek shall inherit the earth. And he means it when he says it. That those who we often overlook are indeed the ones who are great servants of the Lord. And oftentimes we don't even know their names. And maybe that's the reminder that I need that when I am serving the Lord and I wonder if I'm doing anything that's useful, or I might think this is such a small thing, why I'm spending my time on it, or maybe I'm just confused about the whole thing. I'm like, Lord, I don't know why you want me to do this, but I'm going to trust you and do it. That I need to be ready to serve in those situations as well. That I need to trust God and his plan and just simply put myself under his care and do whatever he asks. I'm not going to be the quarterback. I'm not going to have my names in big lights and remembered. But I know that my place is in heaven for all eternity. That God has called me to something important. To serve him. And so, like everyone else, I should be ready to serve. In his holy name, amen. At this time, we confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, our offerings will be gathered, and we'll sing our offering hymn, Serve the Lord with Gladness. Please be seated. In our prayers this morning, we pray for those included in our prayer guide, especially for Wayne Clunt, who has health concerns, Lorraine Shackelford on hospice care, Judy Zimmerman, who's healing from thyroid surgery on Tuesday, for Alan Stuber, that's a cousin of Daryl Magnuson, who's hospitalized with a blood clot, and also for the friends and family of Sidney Wessel, brother of Mary Jane Muth, who died unexpectedly on Tuesday. So let us turn to the Lord in prayer. Please stand to pray. We pray. Heavenly Father, with us salvation is impossible, but with you all things are possible. Give boldness to your church to proclaim Jesus as Lord, that by his death and resurrection, you have brought forgiveness and life for eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give witness to your mighty acts of salvation. Bless the ladies and work of the LWML who serve with the purpose of proclaiming the gospel 
in so many different ways, especially supporting missionaries here and around the world who bring the good news of Jesus to people who have not heard. May you equip them and each of us to be ready to serve when you have the opportunities laid before us to share the good news of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty Lord, give to the nations of the earth both the desire for and the blessing of peace. Stop the actions of terrorists and those who would oppress with the power of fear. Bless our president, our governor, and all who pass, enforce, and judge our laws. Protect all who serve to protect us in the military, the police force, and emergency personnel. May you give peace and hope to all who have been affected by disasters, especially the hurricanes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant us all humility to recognize the sanctity of every human life you have created, redeemed, and called as your own. Teach us to receive each neighbor as a gift and privilege in our time, in our land, and throughout the world. Bring an end to abortion, physician-assisted suicide, and all pressures to use death as a solution to suffering. Instead, help us to show people the cross of Jesus, where through his suffering and death, he promises an end to suffering and gives life forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, look with compassion on those who are struggling with illness, grief, or suffering, especially for Wayne, Lorraine, Judy, Alan, the family and friends of Sydney, all in our midst who are hurting and suffering, especially those we name silently before you. Father, reassure these, your children, of your love and grant them healing according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting Father, bless the homes in which your people live. Guide husbands and wives to love and forgive each other and strengthen them in their life together. Help parents to be faithful examples for their children and for children to honor, serve, and obey their parents. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We sing our sending hymn number 835.